Good morning, this is Angela with Parkos Permaculture. Today I am at Pacific Community Park in Vancouver, Washington, where we are going to visit their demonstration gardens. Now, as you approach the area, you see a beautiful field of California poppies. These are a Pacific Northwest native, and they were absolutely humming with bumblebees. A really lovely image to draw you into the garden space. Now, this demonstration garden is situated within a larger park. When I lived in Vancouver 20 years ago, this area had not yet been developed, and so I'm not super familiar with this park, but it looks like a wonderful space that has a dog park, trails, a community garden, and this demonstration garden, which is maintained by the master gardeners. The gardens here are actually a series of eight demonstration gardens all put together in conjunction with a community garden. Welcome to the Natural Gardens at Pacific Community Park. Here you will find ideas and inspiration for landscaping and maintaining your own yard in ways that are good for the health of your family and pets and that are friendly to the environment. Whether you take away just one new idea or decide to landscape your entire yard in a natural way, the choices you make as an individual will make a difference in the quality of life you and your children experience. You can make a difference. On this tour, I'm gonna to show you around each of the eight demonstration garden sites. But first, we're going to take a look over here at the community gardens, which are located behind me. And we'll also tour the riparian area. And there's that wildflower meadow full of California poppies. Now, each of these eight gardens are meant to show you different ways you can landscape in your yard that don't use a monoculture lawn. There are several different strategies employed and we'll get to all of them. I love that they even used an eco roof full of sedums here on the main entrance. Look how great those sedums are, a lot of them going to flower. Now here behind us is the community garden plot. I love seeing community gardens. They are such a wonderful resource where folks can grow their own food, even if they don't have access to their own land. Community garden plots are also a place where community is fostered and folks can connect. As I walk around the edge, before I've even gotten to the signage, I know this must be the edible landscaping demonstration garden. One wall of the garden is a series of espaliered pear trees. These are Flemish beauty. I grow seckle pears and I have not grown Flemish beauty, but these specimens seem to be doing very well here. Now, as we walk around the edge of this garden, looking for the entrance, you can see that this whole garden is located along a busy road. I love that juxtaposition of even in a busy area where the focus is car traffic, you can create these beautiful areas of vibrant landscaping that are habitat for wildlife and productive for people. I love this classic border here of catmint, always brings in the bees, beautiful long bloomers in a dry, sunny location. The garden has a series of arches. This one has a hardy kiwi on it. You can see it's quite an old kiwi. Up and over the top, it's in bloom right now, just like mine is, looking really lovely. As you enter into the garden space, there's this gravel area in the middle of all of the gardens where I imagine they can host classes and events. It kind of represents the footprint of the house that would be here. This garden focuses on edibles and herbs using more of a formal landscaping attempt here, um, less hectic and chaotic than my permaculture design, but there's figs here, there's gooseberries here, all kinds of fruit producing perennial shrubs and small trees. There are um, everything from gumi berries to currants. As we move along from the edibles garden to the next area, it's the dog friendly garden. I love that this is such a striking contrast. Nothing here is grown for food. They, these are plants that are hardy and resistant and can handle traffic from dogs. It's something that I struggle with in my garden. Sometimes I own two standard poodles who are mostly well behaved, but it's good to have that landscaping that is thinking about how you have a garden when you maybe have a dog that is a digger. So they have these raised bed, um, different styles of raised beds here that have barriers to keep dogs out or deter dogs from damaging your plants. I love the fact that they have a diversity of styles here and they also have a path that is paved with flagstone and with sand so that it's not muddy and there's not really a place for your dogs to dig along here and also there isn't any grass for them to turn into you know just a, a mud row as they're running back and forth. I really like this stone pathway here. 
I talk a lot in permaculture about making sure we design for the people that are using the space, but it's also good to design for the dogs that are using the space. This boardwalk may be a good solution if you have trouble with your dogs damaging your grass. Oh, another look at the gumi berry here that was in the edibles garden laden with immature fruit. And then it's on to the wildlife garden. This garden focuses on strategies that don't require pesticides and herbicides, and also that has plants that bring in wildlife. It's really important to create those backyard habitat spaces that have insectary plants, as well as plants that provide food for our birds and small mammals as well. Not only that, but also plants that are hardy and resilient. Again, not needing pesticides and herbicides. This lupin here, really lovely. Looks like they're also in the process of installing an alpine garden here which is a low maintenance garden that won't need those extra additions of fertilizer pesticide herbicide here they have a compost heap which is a great habitat space for those important amphibians and reptiles native currents as well now let's look at the lawn alternatives garden this area is more focused on those low growing creeping plants that you can use in place of grass i do have to say you know as we're looking at this part of the garden some of these plants were looking a little bit rough we've had weird weather so far this spring but it is important to note a lot of these lawn alternative steppable kind of plants are slow to fill in they take a long time and you need to start with a lot of starts in order to fill in a large area. So just be aware if you're looking for that lawn alternative that it doesn't grow super quickly on average. I love this garden um, and the way it employs the urbanite blocks here to create kind of a stepped up, very slowly graded uh, raised bed situation. Now, right next door is the xeriscaping garden, which employs a lot of the same strategies, but uses larger plants, not necessarily looking for those low growing lawn alternatives. In fact, look at these gorgeous sedums, super dark, deep purple, lots and lots of sedums going on here. A great choice for a xeriscaping garden. Xeriscaping being low or no water garden. I'm going to just hone in one more time on yet another sedum here. This variegated one is beautiful. A note here, there's a lot of gravel in the garden. Gravel really heats up your garden. Anytime you're using large quantities of gravel and stone, you can raise the temperature by multiple degrees. So use it really judiciously. It's not the best mulch to have everywhere. And in fact, you have to weed a lot when you use a gravel garden to keep it clean and pristine looking. But lots of other low water plants here. Using manzanita is a great choice. A native on much of the West Coast, a beautiful bee attractor. I thought this little bed here was really interesting, very geometric, interesting use of stones in this garden, employing, again, more succulents that will be low water and will create a really visual architectural look in the garden, a really nice modern look to it. Now, moving on to the beneficial insects garden, this area is focused on those plants that bring in beneficial insects and create habitat for them. Little watering area there for frogs as well as other wildlife. The back half of this garden is all about different composting methods and I really appreciated that they talk through the various strategies you can employ in different garden setups for composting depending on how much space you have and the volume of compost you are interested in creating. I wanted to emphasize here how important it is to have demonstration gardens and show folks what possibilities there are for doing something outside of the status quo, how you can create a garden that is beautiful and resilient and functional, but that it doesn't necessarily look like your traditional, you know, box wood hedges and lawn. I will say there were lots of volunteers working here, weeding in the garden. This is the native plants garden, loads of volunteers that were dedicated to keeping the garden clean, free of weeds and maintaining the plants here. This garden was focused on what you can do with native plants. Here you can see the specific nine bark in bloom, a really great shrub if you're looking for a native that is hardy and fuss free. Again, lots of volunteers working on weeding. All of this gravel requires a lot of weeding. 
this garden was not super low maintenance. None of these gardens really are because the purpose is demonstration. Um, I think here in the rain garden, you get another example of that. Lots of really clever, nicely done landscaping here in the rain garden, but the more gravel you have, the more you have the propensity for weed seeds to get blown in and germinate, pioneering weed seeds especially, and that requires a lot of weeding volunteers here had their list of chores to do and were working diligently in the beautiful late spring sunshine. Here you can see the rain garden in full. It's quite a large space that is doing rainwater capture off of the parking lot here. It utilizes broken up concrete, that urbanite, as the foundation layer in the garden. And on top of that, they have gravel and then plants that it can handle high in inundation with water and then periods of drought. So thank you for coming with me on a tour of the eight demonstration gardens here at Pacific Community Park. I hope that you enjoyed it and got some ideas that you can take back and use in your own garden. I love the idea of garden spaces public garden spaces as an opportunity to communicate what folks can do with their private garden spaces as well. Please don't forget to click like and subscribe. That's the best way you can support the work of this channel. I hope you all are staying well and safe and I'll be back soon.